What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Shameless plug, first off, you guys, you guys are probably wondering, where would you pick up one of these sick flannels? Well, good thing you asked. Uh, this weekend, February 16th and 17th, Motorama, you guys gotta come out. If you want a flannel, first shot to get one is at the Motorama event. If we have any left over, they will be on wrenchworks.com. Shameless plug in the beginning, I know. Anyway, so moving on. If you guys have watched every single video on the channel, which you all should have by now, um, you guys know that the 05, we did a separate video going over all every little detail. So we've done a lot to the first gen, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna go over every single last detail on this thing, answer a bunch of questions. <laughs> answer a bunch of questions, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna answer some DMs. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I asked if you guys had any specific questions about the first gen, uh, so we're gonna answer some of those at the end. Also, I think Snap-on Ryan is bringing us a delivery, so I might have to go do that at the end of the video too. So let's just, let's just jump right into it. But that's what we're doing today. Not a whole lot of work uh, because a lot of the back-end stuff on, at Motorama, trying to get everything ready. Uh, we don't have a ton of time today, but you guys have a lot of questions every time we do a video on this, and now that it's complete, you guys have a lot of questions. So let's let's just jump right into uh, answering and going over all the details, if that makes sense. All right, starting with the exterior of this beast. So we're gonna break this down into segments. So the exterior we're gonna start with, paint job. Let's go, paint job. Look at that. Primo 1993 paint job that is not getting touched for the last and final time the way that this thing is patinaed uh, to beauty is not changing at all, whatsoever. This, we, we mentioned that a truck is gonna get wrapped. This is not the truck, not the truck. Um, trust me, I would love to have a, yet another black vehicle in the fleet, but this thing is too beautiful the way it is. Nature made this, this beautiful. Anyway, wheels and tires. Everybody wants to know wheels and tires. Nitto 420s because they were cheap. And this truck is two wheel drive. This truck is two wheel drive. We're going for the low and mean street beast kind of, kind of look. So uh, 285, 40, 20 size tires. Why did we do that? Because again, it's two wheel drive. We had to clear uh, the, the, the turning radius in the front and it's, it's a little low. 20 by 12 American Force uh, I believe they're a negative 40. So uh, otherwise, exterior-wise, tint, I guess we could throw tint on the exterior, maybe that's interior, 5% uh, all the way around and 20% on the windshield. Pretty much goes for pretty much all of the vehicles. Um, what else are we missing exterior? Oh, roll pan. Everybody wants to know about the roll pan. Uh, roll pan, I believe you can get on airbagit.com. That's a pretty Google, that's a pretty easy Google search. I'm not exactly sure uh, where we got the roll pan. Um, but it might even be in the description of the video, but, um, all right, moving on exterior OS. What else are we forgetting? There's not a whole lot of modifications to the exterior. Let's maybe up, maybe up front Got our lovely, lovely six inch hood stack. This is a grand rock hood stack kit. That's pretty much wrapped up for the, for the, uh, exterior part. Oh boy, I'm gonna fall over. All right guys, next up, drivetrain. So we're gonna talk about the drivetrain a little bit. Kind of hard to see uh, under there. We're gonna try and get some B-roll footage of some of that stuff so you guys can see. Uh, starting from the back forward, we have a Dana 80 uh, disc rear end in here. Dana 80 disc. It's actually out of a pull truck. The, uh, all of the gears are welded together, so it's like a spool, kind of like a spool, it's homemade spool. Uh, it's got a custom uh, four inch DOM drive shaft with 1480 joints in it. Uh, this axle actually has SCS, like dual spline axle shaft, so it's pretty, it's pretty beefed up, it's pretty sweet. Um, on the rear suspension, let's actually do suspension as well too. Um, it's got, let me, let me count these things. One, two, three, four, five. It's got six leaf springs. That's how we achieve the ride height. It is lowered in the rear um, using a set of Calvert Racing Caltrax traction bars. Um, can, transmission, drive shaft to transmission. Let's talk about the transmission. Uh, transmission, Muldoon's Diesel Stage 4 48 transmission. Uh, it is a full 48 that he has his full manual valve body set up. Huge question about that stuff. All the transmission stuff on this truck, Muldoon's diesel and Suncoast performance. Uh, Suncoast set us up with a stubby shaft conversion, uh, which is a nasty output shaft for the transmission uh, to handle all of the power. So uh, moving forward from there, drivetrain wise, 
it's kind of hard. Like moving forward, it's got the factory fuel tank. Um, we'll go over the fuel system when we get to the engine stuff. Front suspension, uh, if we're talking about drivetrain, uh, the front is actually lifted up because this truck was a factory two wheel drive truck. This may look low in the front, but it actually has Moog uh, part number 7226S springs, which actually give it like about an inch, inch and a half uh, height raise in the front, if I said that correctly. I don't know if I did. Other than that, we you guys know we went through this whole thing. We have all new uh, front brakes, everything. It actually has two inch uh, wheel spacers on the front to kind of push that out because the Dana 80 uh, rear is a little bit wider than the front suspension. So we did that. It's got two inch Bora uh, wheel spacers on there. Also, I believe it has just a factory like uh, style shock in it. Nothing special on the shocks. Um, I don't know if this is, it's not really drivetrain, but I can see it from here. It's got a Borgeson uh, steering shaft because they uh, are super crappy on uh, these first gens. And I believe that's pretty much it for the drivetrain. We'll probably hit interior next. All right, we're smiling and laughing because we had to outtake this a couple times because Greg's just being, Greg's being a little silly right now. By the way, this would be a great time to hit the like button. You could hit that like button anytime. That'd be great. Uh, it helps out immensely. So interior wise, we got a lot going on in here. It's pretty, pretty sweet interior for a first gen. So uh, first up, uh, anyway, you know, actually, let's start up top here. So our man, Ryan Snyder, uh, getting back to the wrap stuff, we're not wrapping this truck, but we are wrapping another truck. Ryan Snyder is actually the one who hooked us up with this suede headliner. I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna need to get a brush to uh, make sure we get the uh, lines uh, correctly, because right now it's slacking. Moving down, uh, we have Corbu, Corbo, I believe it's Corbo seats. Um, this, these are right from Corvo. Uh, the seat bracket, actually, they actually sell a first-gen specific uh, seat bracket for a Ram Charger and these first-gens. We actually bought one. It kind of was up too high, and I wanted to move the seats back a little bit, so me and Mark, our man Mark, um, we modified them. We lowered them about an inch or so um, so they could sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm about six foot, and it's kind of cramped in a single cab here. So seats, seat, seat, uh, huh? seat brackets are from Corbo. Uh, this uh, center console, which I don't know if you guys will see, we'll probably lay some B-roll over this, but the center console is actually out of a Chevy GMC, I believe, Suburban, um, but it's black, and it matches, and it's got cup holders. First gen and cup holders don't really, they, they, they don't come along, with, so we, we, had to, we had to change that up. So uh, carpet. Black carpet, one of you guys actually sent this in to us. I believe the last name was Collins. Shane, I believe he might, his name might have even been Shane. I apologize. Uh, but the black carpet, black carpet really ties it all together. So sitting in here, um, the, the first thing that sticks out is the Muldoon's switched shifter. Now, I get a lot of questions about the transmission and this shifter. Um, it is an automatic. You can manually manually select your gears, second gear, third gear. Uh, but you gotta run his valve body. You should just be running this whole transmission. But really, you gotta, you gotta run the valve body correlates to this shifter uh, to manually do that. You can't just put the shifter in your truck. But Muldoon's Diesel takes care of all this. Has a really good kit if you wanna install it yourself. Um, simple head unit. Uh, Ispro taking care of all of our gauges as you know pretty much usual. Uh, we have an RPM tack here, uh, which actually picks up from a factory plug underneath here. Uh, we have boost, back pressure, uh, we have trans temp, EGT, and fuel pressure. Uh, fuel pressure goes up to 100 because we're running a P pump on this beast. Um, other than that, you know, you gotta you gotta get the Wrenchworks key tag. I'm just throwing in all kinds of plugs. This video, this is ridiculous. Um, Oh, exterior, I forgot about headlights. I believe those are rigid uh, five by seven headlights. Those are really nice, those are sweet because you can't see crap out of this thing at night. Um, and I think that's pretty much concludes the interior. Biggest part, let's move to the engine. Moving into the engine bay, one thing to note that's kind of still underneath the truck that we didn't really talk about, uh, air dog. Let's, well, engine wise, we could talk about the fuel setup and talk about the air setup and then we could talk about the actual engine. So fuel setup, uh, stock fuel tank, you guys know, Air Dog actually set us up with a really, really custom kind of Frankenstein uh, pump for the truck for the P-pump pressures. You know, we normally run about, I think it's set at like 65 right now, 65 PSI. So a uh, huge shout out to Air, the guys at Air Dog always taking care of us. Uh, fuel, other than that, pump it into our feral diesel. I believe this is a stage four. It's the biggest uh, 12 millimeter pump that they uh, use, so uh, has been awesome 
seriously awesome. Not coming from a guy who knew pretty much nothing about P-Pump stuff, uh, a little bit of help from our man Mikey G, of course, as always, uh, setting up the timing. We're running about 25 degrees, which may be a little, a little too much for these, but that's okay. Um, stock lines, we can use stock lines with a 12 millimeter pump, so we did that. Um, I pretty much, uh, Mikey G actually set us up with the injectors that are in this thing. We might be changing them up a little bit, but they are 5 by 25s which are on the on the bigger side but good thing our turb skis they take care of cleaning up all that fuel so um, I believe that's pretty much it fuel wise uh, specifically for the overflow valve we're using a Keating machine uh, check ball in there um, our man Abe from Muldoon's actually helped us out with the linkage stuff uh, he helped out a lot um, let's go over the air the air setup on here you guys know uh, Banks took care of all of the intercooler piping on this using the twin ram uh, really, really sweet piece. Intercooler wise right now on the truck, we're actually running a on three performance second gen uh, intercooler on this thing. We did have to modify the front grill support, I believe it's called, correct me if I'm wrong. The fascia right here, I had to modify that quite a bit to get this thing to fit. It's really, really big. It's half the reason why we don't really have the inserts in it because I had to modify this so much. Um, I think it can be done a little bit, but moving on. Moving on, uh, the turbos. Everybody wants to know about the turbos. Turbos, both turbos are from a stainless diesel. They are both five blade turbos. That's why this thing screams like I'm not gonna finish that sentence what I was finished that by, but they are loud. They are very, very loud. The sizing on them is a 468-83 with a 480-96-132. I believe it's a 1.0 housing on the manifold charger. Steed Speed always taking care of us on uh, our exhaust manifolds. This is running one of their T4 setups on there. Me and our man Mark fabbed up all of this uh, compound piping. This is not really a kit you can buy. We fabbed up everything. We got all the flanges from Keating Machine again, um, and they they fit really, really well. Super pumped, um, and obviously we, we did a hood stack because hood stacks are awesome. So as far as, uh, other engine modifications, we do have a Keating machine front cover on this thing, an adjustable pump gear that's inside of here. I'm trying to think of other internal modifications. We've got a Hamilton cam in this thing, uh, Manton valve train. Uh, but other than that, the actual, so the bottom end is completely stock. We did actually pull the head off, if you guys remember. We've, we've had this thing for quite a while, so I'm trying to remember all this as we're going. So the cylinder head was taken off Kastner's performance up in New York, um, O-ringed it, gave us a fresh flat surface, did a little bit of porting underneath the valves, not a, not a crazy ton. Uh, factory intake shelf is still on it. And uh, just to kind of go over, make sure we're good to go, uh, fasten down with a set of 625s. Whew. This is actually a Mishimoto radiator, and I believe... I'm going to forget stuff. I'm going to forget stuff. I apologize. Uh, PTP uh, got, us, got us set up with the uh, lava wrap, which we did last video, and engine-wise, that's about it. I mean, we've got a, got a good old napper battery over here. And other than that, guys, I'm pretty sure... That about covers it. I'm sure you guys have pretty specific questions about this truck that are probably in the DM. So we're, we're going to bounce right to that. And that'll probably lead me to other points that I kind of forgot to talk about. So I'm going to open up some DMs here. We're going to talk, we're, we're going to answer some questions. Alrighty, first DM question. Will you ever short box swap the first gen? Um, I'll probably say, I probably won't say never, but it's definitely nowhere near in my mind of anything to do. We got a lot of other plans. Uh, why compounds and not a big single charger? Um, honestly, I prefer compounds over big single any day for any truck, any scenario, whether it's big power, uh, daily driver. Uh, big singles can get the job done, but compounds when you have... Um, you know, uh, a, a good horsepower goal and you still want to drive the truck. Um, they just, a small turbo takes care of the small stuff and the big turbo takes care of the big stuff and they work together and they make a much more uh, complete RPM package, if that makes sense. What size turbo injector setup were you running on the VE and then what turbo injector setup did you go to with the P-Pump? So VE pump, uh, we maxed the VE pump out. I believe they were... Uh, five by 18s, 
it wasn't six or seven. So I believe they were five by 18s is the spray pattern for those. Um, and I believe we were on a 363 charger. I think we were making about 400, about tops 400. So uh, P-Pump, we pretty much just went over that, five by 25s, uh, 68 over 80. 12 millimeter pump. How many miles does the first gen have on it? So that's pretty good. We didn't really get into the story. Oops, I almost just knocked that over. Uh, so the first gen, when we picked it up, I actually did not even look at the odometer because we only did a very short test drive. We knew we were going to be taking this thing apart, so I didn't really go crazy trying to. I think if there was something wrong, it was going to get fixed. It wasn't going to defer the deal. The body is really where I, what I care about. This thing has 323,000, I believe. But the funny thing is the odometer never worked when I picked it up. So I don't know how long it didn't work before we picked it up. So it's got at least got about 325. It could be 375. I have no idea. But that's how many miles are on this entire truck. Uh, we picked this truck up, I believe, South Carolina. So that's why it was super clean. There's no rust. There's surface rust on the frame, which you guys kill me on every single time. We're going to clean it up. Don't worry. But there's no rust anywhere else. This is, this is beauty rust. This isn't like cancer rust. Anyway, moving on. Were you hinting at a common rail swap today? Blow up the 12 valve, throw the P-pump on the 24 valve, and then on a common rail. Now that's thinking with your head. Now, I will say this. Um, the mechanical stuff, the 12 and 24 valve stuff, you guys know I love common rail swaps. So um, I'm not saying one of those two might not get a common rail swap, but taking the P-pump from this engine and putting it on the 24 valve, J Powell 93. I like the way you think, my man. I like the way you think. <clears throat> How many cc's is in the first gen pump? So this pump is actually um, set. <laughs> Damn it, Shane. Damn it, Michael. This Farrell 12 mil pump uh, max can go to 640 on his flow sheet. I actually, have, <laughs> I have it set at 640. We haven't touched it. Uh, so it's at 640 right now. And I've actually confirmed with him that it is definitely at 640. So that's pretty high for normal everyday driving. But, I, I, you know, we, we like to party. My name is Rod, and I like to party. Will you get a first-gen crew cab? Me and my buddy built one. Um, that would be cool. That would be a cool project. I've kind of said like in other Q and A's like a rat rod older like kind of like resto project would be really really cool. Did you do any head modifications? Did you leave it stock porting? We kind of went over that. Um, it's, it's very not a whole lot of porting and o-ringed. If you could go back in time to pick a better truck than the first gen, which generation Duramax would you choose? Uh, probably like a I forget what the names are, uh, like the Cat Eye Duramaxes, like an older, older one. Nothing newer than that, probably, if I'm replacing the first gen. A better truck than the first gen. That's just, that's disrespectful. What made you want to get a two-wheel drive first gen over a four-wheel drive first gen? If I could have found a, a four-wheel drive instead of this one in the price range. Guys, remember the first gen, we picked this thing up for like, a couple thousand bucks. This was not expensive. We were looking for the cheapest, cleanest first gen project that I could find. I was kind of getting sick and tired of finding rusted, expensive ones. And this one we picked up pretty cheap. I, I honestly think it was pretty cheap. Um, it just happened to be two wheel drive. I didn't really care at the time. I would have definitely loved a four wheel drive one. I even thought about swapping this thing to four wheel drive, but you know, who knows? Who knows? When are you gonna get it? When are you gonna get on the dyno and run it at the track? As soon as the winter clears up. As soon as the winter clears up, this thing. Honestly, this might go to the first uh, dyno event. The first dyno event, I believe, is the big time customs um, annual kind of benefit uh, dyno day and show. Uh, I forget exactly when. I'm gonna look it up right now because I want to. I probably will be there. Um, and I'm gonna put the dates up on the screen. Does your brother Nick still have the third gen six speed? No, he does, he has not had that for the longest time. What kind of power are you looking to make with the first gen? I would say, man, I hope this thing hits 900. I don't know, the, you know, these mechanical engines, they like to have the mind of their own, so who knows? I mean, like a uh, 68 and a 480 with this much fuel, should support quite a bit of power. Uh, I hope like, dynos can be all over the place too. They really can be. I would hope that we could make 900, that would be, that would be cool. Uh, 
was it worth doing the Dana 80 swap? And what do you think some of the cons of doing it? Um, cons, I mean, it's definitely not like a super direct bolt-in thing. Like we kind of had to modify the shocks a little bit, stuff like that. So there are, it's not really a, a completely drop-in. I really just wanted disc brakes all the way around. That's kind of why I went with that. Um, nothing wrong with the other stuff or drums. I just really wanted disc brakes on this truck. That's why we did the, the Dana 80. What were the first preventative things that you did to the 12 valve besides the KDP? Um, Killer Dalpin, for those of you guys who don't know. Um, we went through this thing top to bottom. Every single thing was checked and touched uh, base-wise on this. Uh, all of the fluids, uh, all of like the brakes were changed, all of the bearings. Uh, we really went through this thing top to bottom. These trucks a lot of times are not like daily driven. Like we found this one, this was, this was not like a barn find, but a older gentleman uh, drove this thing occasionally and let it sit a lot. Um, so we really wanted to make sure everything was in really good shape. So we did change a lot, like maintenance stuff, like pretty much everything maintenance wise. Uh, the VE pump was leaking fuel, so we took that off. Just a lot of little things like belts, hoses, uh, you guys know like we went through all of that when we first got the first gen and again the whole purpose of this video is to kind of benchmark this time uh, With the first gen and put this at the top of the playlist So as we go forward everything that's already been done has kind of been talked about and gone over and everything is in Chronological order in the first gen playlist if you guys want to watch from the beginning when we got this truck Everything is documented all of the maintenance everything all right, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video on the first gen. If you guys do have any more specific questions uh, that you guys don't do Instagram, um, I'll try and get in the comments and answer them down below. That way we can kind of answer every specific question that you may have about that. That pretty much probably knocked out about a good 85, 90% unless it's like super, super specific. But track times and dyno numbers coming very, very soon. As far as future plans for the truck, I don't really, I, I want to enjoy the truck uh, the way it's at. The biggest thing that I maybe foresee happening is hopefully we don't uh, kill this really really old uh, long block if we do then we will definitely have to do something with the engine uh, maybe quickly to try and get it back because I want to really enjoy the truck uh, this spring slash summer um, and and use it and race it and dyno it and maybe make small tweaks here and there but uh, if I have a presumption of maybe uh, something losing compression um, it would probably if I had to bet, it'd probably be this truck. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video. It's a little bit more laid back, being a little bit goofier. Um, hopefully see you guys a lot, uh, a lot of you guys this weekend. And uh, last but not least, last but not least, make sure you guys are subscribed, hit the like button. Uh, the next couple videos that are gonna come out, uh, well, every video is awesome by the way. But the next couple videos especially are going to be awesome. The second gen is getting, the, well, the bed is getting painted. So you guys will know the paint color of the second gen. Um, and we'll get into that. So a lot of cool content, a lot of cool videos coming at you guys very, very soon. Uh, so again, subscribe and I will see you guys tomorrow. I believe I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're getting, we're getting back on the grind of the videos. It is awesome and I will see you guys soon. See you.